or something went wrong. So something did go wrong yesterday and we didn't catch it. It was, or was it? This should have been a sine squared theta for what we know. Was that, that was a problem, right? It should have been sine squared. Yeah. All right, so let's go back and I'll use the blue marker for all our corrections here. So let's erase some stuff that's wrong, obviously. Oh, that's weird. In the next line, I have sine squared theta. So if you look in the back of your quiz, you might be able to find it before I do. There's so much on this page of notes here. Oh, it is sine 2 theta. Yeah. All right. It is sine 2 theta. OK. And we wrote squared. And we wrote squared. OK, so the first thing was right, and then I copied it down wrong. So I think what happened, in fact, I can undo this. Oh my gosh. All right, so that should be a sine 2 theta. So that was what I was warning you about. That was basically my penmanship and my eyes, somewhere between my writing and my eyes messed me up. So this should be two theta. Another good thing to do is wrap it in parentheses and then you know it's definitely not an exponent. It's definitely a coefficient. All right, so that's two theta. So we better go through. I think it's best to just erase all this stuff because it's gonna be significantly different. So we got sine 2 theta. Now this is going to go in a very similar way to the solution we saw yesterday. So same first step, multiply by 2. Sine 2 theta equals 1. So from this, it's not too hard to, well, first of all, what angle does, uh, if you take sine of what angle will you get 1? So you can think on the unit circle what place on the unit circle has a sine value of 1? There's only one spot on the unit circle. Pi over 2 at the top. So I want the biggest uh, y value, which is 1, and that's right at the top. We got pi over 2. So this is, I don't care about the x. I mean, it's 0, but really what I care about is the 1 right there. And of course, this is pi over 2. So we know, so I'll write down some stuff we know. We know sine pi over 2 equals 1. So how does that relate to what we have? Our angle 2 theta needs to be pi over 2. So our angle is 2 theta. So I see just looking here, here's pi over 2. Here's 2 theta. That means 2 theta equals pi over 2. So any questions on that idea? Uh, yes. Yeah, we'll just use the tiniest bit of algebra to get theta. Just divide by 2. Yeah, so 2 theta is pi over 2. So, of course, multiply by a half regular theta, pi over 4. So that uh, is... And I said theta between 0 and 2 pi. So definitely pi over 4 is between 0 and 2 pi. No problem. Now, is there another angle between 0 and 2 pi that... Uh, could have sine of that equal to 1. What's the next? So after pi over 2, what's the next angle that lands me at the top of the unit circle? You got to go past 2 pi. So I'll do a full lap. Oh, way more zoomed in. So I'm going to go a full lap around. I don't know why this is scrolling like crazy. So if I do a full lap and then go pi over 2, how much is that angle right there? So do a full 2 pi or 4 pi over 2 and then another pi over 2. So we got 5 pi over 2. I'll label that right down here. So I know that sine 
5 pi over 2 also equals 1. That does a full lap and then another pi over 2. So could theta equal, sorry, 2 theta equal 5 pi over 2, same exact uh, algebra step, divide by 2. Now the question is 5 pi over 4 still in between 0 and 2 pi? No? All right, that's because fractions suck. So 2 pi is 8 pi over 2. That's pretty obvious. So now is 5 pi. Oh, we need to go to fourths. Is that right? That should be right. That's why you guys were looking at me weird. All right. So 2 pi is 8 pi over 4. Now is 5 pi over 4 less than 8 pi over 4? Oh, yeah. A little hard to tell because fractions have different denominators, but we go common denominator, no problem. All right, so we got two answers. So I'll put them in a weird container, and I'll put the word or between them. So theta is pi over 4, or theta is 5 pi over 4. There's actually two answers right there. If I expanded my interval, maybe 0 to 4 pi, I would have got two more angles in there also. That would have worked. Yeah? Yeah, there's actually, so if, if I eliminated this condition f and just said for any theta values, like didn't put a restriction, I would have infinite solutions here. And we'll get problems like that uh, very soon when we do solving equations. So we will, overall, there will be infinite solutions. And I think all the web work problems restrict it to something like 0 to 2 pi or negative pi to positive pi. They'll put restrictions on it. Uh, but usually I don't put restrictions on the... Uh, problems I give on quizzes. So you don't have to worry about, you know, how many of these angles are actually in there. You can just say, it's all the angles that look like this. So is there only two for this? Yeah, so actually, let's, <coughs> let's lift that restriction. So I'll just rewrite the problem, but I'll say for any theta. So we'll do the exact same. Solve sine theta cos theta equals 1 half. So we got down to sine 2 theta. And this is for any theta, any no real number theta. All right, so we still got our unit circle up there. And I know that pi over 2 is one solution. What happens if I add 2 pi to sine, or 2 pi to the angle for sine? Does that change the output? So do, do we do periodic properties yet? All right, so we'll do periodic properties very soon um, when we do graphs. So the full correct answer is I can add as many ro full rotations as I want. I can do one rotation, two rotations, I can do 142 rotations. I can also do negative rotations, spin the other way. Uh, so for example, a negative 3 pi over 2 would be the backwards way to get to pi over 2. And I could go backwards a full lap and then another uh, negative 3 pi over 2. So the full answer, so we got 2 theta equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And this is for any Integer k. And have I talked about the integers this quarter? All right, so what is this funky z? This is what we call a, a bold z. A blackboard bold is the official font. I guess you can say whiteboard because we don't use blackboards. We don't even use whiteboards anymore. So the integers are all the whole numbers including 0 and all the negative ones. And we use dot, dot, dots to say that's obvious. What comes next? So we see negative 3 is the next one on the left, positive 3 is the next one on the right, et cetera, et cetera. So any amount of rotations, and I'm still going to get a sign of that 
will still be one. So it's still one. Now I'm almost done. All I have to do is same thing I did before, divide everything by two. So theta equals, now you want to be careful, you need to multiply both of these by one half. So we got pi over four plus pi k. So the unrestricted answer, if I say I'll take any angle, this is the full answer. Pi over four plus as many pi's as you want, positive or negative. Is that where the k stands for? What's that? k stands for like everything. k is any integer. So this, this set right here is all integers, uh, which is positive and negative whole numbers. I don't know. It depends on how you define the whole numbers, but I'll just use the word integer. All right. So that's as many. Now it's a little weird because we're not adding full rotations. We're adding half rotations, but our function doubles our angle. So whatever the angle is, it's going to be multiplied by 2. So that's why you see a pi in there instead of a 2 pi. All right. We'll do plenty of algebra uh, solving equations soon enough. So now we're going to get some more identities. We're going to take all those. So we'll start with the sine squared theta equals 1 minus cos theta, 1 minus cos 2 theta over 2. And I'm going to let alpha equal theta over 2. So I'm going to make a variable change, and I'm just going to let alpha equal theta over 2. And I'm going to take out all my thetas and put alpha in there instead. So alpha is theta over 2. That means 2 alpha equals regular theta. So that's how alpha is related to theta. So we get sine squared alpha over 2. If you really don't like Greek letters, uh, I really recommend you, you write theta out. That's going to be everywhere that you go for trigonometry. But if you really don't want to write alpha, you can use an A instead. So we get this. Uh, what's it? Sure is. Yes. Yeah, so we got sine squared 2 alpha equals 1 minus cos alpha over 2. And I'm going to solve for, I'm just going to take a square root here. So solve for sine of 2 alpha. And what did I forget about here? It might be a little hard to see because our exponential notation is misleading. So this is really what we're looking at, sine of that 2 alpha whole thing squared. So I took a square root. What did I forget to do? Plus or minus. So we had sine squared. That could be plus or minus. It's going to square out to be positive. So when I square root, I got to account for that plus minus. So I square rooted something squared. So I get plus minus. Unfortunately, the plus minus sticks around. So how do you know whether to use plus or minus? Plus or minus depends on the quadrant of 2 alpha. So plus minus depends on the quadrant of 2 alpha. Most of the time, I'll tell you what quadrant alpha is in. And then you have to figure out, well, if alpha is in quadrant uh, 3, where does that put 2 alpha? Okay. Uh, and sometimes it's a little harder to, uh, to see. Oops, looks like I made the wrong substitution. Did I?
I think something is messed up right now. So we started with sine squared. Let's see, sine squared. Uh, because if I just uh, substituted theta for theta over 2, that would look more confusing. I'm changing the variable, so... Why do you change the variable? Because we get more interesting identities. Okay. Uh, basically because I said so. Yes, because 2 theta would have been 2 theta would have been 4 alpha. All right. That's not the substitution I wanted to make. All right, so let's cross all this out. It's not wrong, but it's not uh, the way I want to write this. Actually, I'm just going to cut both of the alphas in half. That's what I really wanted. Well, let's start over. All right. So I'm going to do the opposite. Alpha is 2 theta. So alpha over 2 equals regular theta. And we're going to do the exact same algebra after we substitute. So we got sine squared alpha over 2. Equals 1 minus cos alpha over 2. And now. We can take square root. So we got sine alpha over 2 equals plus or minus square root 1 minus cos alpha over 2. This is what we're going to use. Now, what I wrote above is slightly wrong. That should have been a 4 alpha. That makes it correct. Uh, but the more useful version is the one I just put a box around. So we'll use that one instead. So we're going to do the same thing with cos squared. Cos squared theta is 1 plus cos 2 theta over 2. So do the same uh, substitution and then algebra steps. It's going to look really similar. Give you 15 seconds to do this algebra. Now, just to be sure, look at the back of your quiz, make sure I'm getting these right. Pretty sure I am. I'm a little worried because I made one mistake. And we'll do the same thing for tangent. Uh, tangent squared alpha over 2 equals 1 minus cos alpha over 1 plus cos alpha and then square root. We get our plus minus square root. Does that match up with your cheat sheet? Yeah. Okay. Now 
And again, I did write that note, the plus minus now depends on quadrant of alpha over two. So you have to know where alpha over two is. So my mass body sense just went off before because plus minus depends on the quadrant of two alpha up top. Uh, it's actually ambiguous. If you know alpha is in quadrant one, for example, does two alpha land in quadrant one or two? Depends on where in quadrant one you came from. So for example, up here, you know, if you're, if you're definitely know that your angle is in quadrant one, if I double that, so we call it alpha. If I double alpha, we can see it's going to look something like this. There's two alpha, for example. Uh, but what if alpha is in quadrant one, but it's big? So maybe this is alpha. Now two alpha, you need to double that. It's going to land somewhere over here. That would be two alpha. So that's why if you know where alpha is, if you double it, you don't necessarily know where it's going to land. Um, going the other way, if you cut it in half, it turns out that you'll know exactly where it goes. And we'll do that algebraically with inequalities. We'll just cut our inequality in half, and you'll know exactly where your angle is going to be. So we'll do some example problems now. So I think we did pi over 12 with uh, some difference uh, formulas for sine. We could do, that was probably pi over 3 minus pi over 4, something like that was pi over 12, if you go with common denominators. So we're going to do, instead of solving it that way, we're going to use the half angle up here. So I'm going to go and use sine alpha over 2. So we know sine alpha over 2 is plus minus square root 1 minus uh, cos alpha over 2. So looking at these, what is alpha? Or maybe an easier question, what is alpha over 2? Pi over 12. I'm just looking and saying, all right, the input for sine is alpha over 2. The input for sine is pi over 12. So alpha over 2 equals pi over 12. So easy question, what's alpha? Pi over 6. All right. So alpha is pi over 6. So this is plus or minus square root. Now I'm using the right side. 1 minus cos alpha, which is pi over 6 divided by 2. Do you know cosine pi over 6? Oh yeah. Square root 3 over 2? That's no problem. This is one of the few times I'm going to tell you to not simplify, not try to get um, turn a fraction of fractions into uh, just a regular two-story fraction. <clears throat> I do have to make a choice plus or minus. So we look right here, what quadrant is, here's our alpha over 2, what quadrant is pi over 12 in? Should be an easy question. One. It's a really tiny angle. It's even smaller than pi. It's half of half the way to pi over six. So the answer is one. So everybody's positive in quadrant one. So I'm going with positive here. So we just get square root one minus square root three over two over two, and this is our final answer. Now some of you are going to try to simplify this down. For those of you that are obsessed with simplifying, I'll use the blue pen to show you how to do it properly. 
So I don't recommend you do it if you really want to. Uh, that'll be fine as long as you do it correctly. So I'm going to take the numerator and multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So the denominator is 2, and the reciprocal is 1 over 2, or 1 half. Now I have to multiply the entire numerator by 1 half. I can either go add the numerator with common denominator, or I can just distribute the half across. It doesn't matter the order you go. So if I go with distribute, I get 1 half minus square root 3 over 4. And that could be a final answer right there. If I went common denominator and subtract first, that will be 2 minus square root 3 over 2 times a half, like that. So 1 is 2 over 2. So now I subtract. And now when I multiply, it's very easy. Just multiply the 2 by the 2. We get 2 squared. And this turns out a little bit nicer. 2 squared, square root, is just regular 2. So this is probably as simple as you can make it right there. And of course, if I kept going up here, my common denominator would be 4. 2 minus square root 3. And then it re reduces down to the same thing I got down below. So if you really want to simplify, go for it. It's going to take an extra minute or so, so you're going to lose a little bit of time if you simplify these answers. So how do I know when I'm actually done and I don't need to simplify? Well, all I had to do was basically substitute in. If you leave it, if this is your final answer right here, I'm not going to give you very many points at all. You didn't tell me plus or minus, and you also told me you had no idea what cos pi over 6 was. So you're not going to get very many points. All you really did was use your formula page on the back, and you just did this one substitution right here. So maybe that's worth 1 out of 10 right there. So that's our first one right there. The other way we solved it, just to really quickly review, I think this is sine pi over 3 minus pi over 4. And you can go the, uh, use a difference formula for sine right there. So if you want to go that way, I won't tell you which way to go. It's up to you. Next example. Change of pi over 8. No matter how hard you work, you will not find any two angles that you know about that will subtract or add to be pi over 8. You're going to uh, fail at that. Because no matter which two you subtract, you can get pi over 12, but you're not going to get pi over 8. So I'm not going to go through why, but you can try all the subtracting all combinations of angles. You're not going to get to pi over 8. However, if I double pi over 8, I got pi over 4. And that's one we know about. So there's really only one way to figure this one out. It's the exact same first step. So we know tangent alpha over 2 is plus minus. Oh, pi over 8 is boring. That's quadrant 1. Let's go with uh, 3 pi over 8. That will be way better. So we'll do tangent 3 pi over 8. Why do I have plus? Oh my god. Tangent pi over 2 plus or minus square root 1 minus, is it 1 minus cos theta? Yeah, 1 minus cos alpha over 1 plus cos alpha. And let alpha over 2 equal 3 pi over 8. So alpha is 3 pi over 4. So tangent 3 pi over 8. So our alpha over 2 is 3 pi over 8. 
equals plus or minus square root 1 minus cos alpha, which is 3 pi over 4, divided by 1 plus cos alpha, 3 pi over 4. So what quadrant is 3 pi over 8 in? If we think of our unit circle, normally I got pi over 2 at the top, but I want to go in 8s. So how many pi over 8s is pi over 2? Four pi over eight, eight pi over eight if I go halfway around. So where's three pi over eight? It's gonna be right about there. There's three pi over eight. So I got quadrant one. So I know tangent is positive in quadrant one. So we're choosing positive. Now you need to know cos three pi over four. You can always redraw your unit circle, 3 pi over 4. That is 3 fourths of the way to 4 pi over 4. There's our 3 pi over 4 angle. What is our reference angle? Just 1 pi over 4. All right, so redraw a reference angle where it should be, right here. Pi over 4. And we got 1 over square root 2, 1 over square root 2. So what changes with the point that I want over here? Which one becomes negative, x or y? x. So we got negative 1 over square root 2, comma, regular 1 over square root 2. And our cosine is the first one, is the negative 1 over square root 2. So we know cos 3 pi over 4 equals negative 1 over square root 2. So I'm going to use that value wherever I see in r square root, cos 3 pi over 4. So that is negative 1 over square root 2 divided by 1 plus negative 1 over square root 2. Not very much simplification I'm going to do except take care of the minus minus, which is plus. Now this is a, an ugly fraction of fractions. You can go common denominator, add them together, multiply by the reciprocal of the full denominator if you really want to. But again, if you make a mistake, I will penalize you probably one point out of 10 if you make a simplification mistake. The other problem is, if you simplify, then I have to look at all your work very carefully and make sure you simplified correctly. So just don't do it. Save yourself time, save me time. Tangent. You mean when we chose plus minus? Yeah. So this plus minus depends on our original angle right there. So because we had a quadrant one angle, it's going to be positive. If I chose uh, 5 pi over 8, that would have landed in quadrant two. That's why I, I drew our unit circle with pi over 8, uh, with 8 as our denominator. So I can see, you know, if I went 5 pi over 8, I would have been, you know, somewhere right around there. And likewise, if it was maybe 9 pi over 8, I would have been in quadrant three, and so on and so forth. So you basically know plus or minus on the original problem. So I know if it's going to be positive or negative before really doing any work. Just by saying, ah, tangent of 3 pi over 8, what quadrant is it in? And that determines positive or negative. So I talked to my sister after PEMDAS, and she said, why don't you use adjectives like amazing? or all-knowing, and I said all-knowing is an A and a K. That doesn't work, and amazing is debatable. All right, so if cos alpha equals negative 3 fifths, 
This is our nest example. Find the exact values of sine alpha over 2, cos alpha over 2. Sure. The fast answer is because people hundreds of years ago decided Greek letters were the way to go. I think the reason for that is because a lot of trigonometry comes from the Greeks. So all the sort of original notes were in Greek, using Greek letters. So they just uh, kept using those. Uh, for the same reason, you just keep doing things like we'll be the trailblazers indefinitely, not for any real particular reason. I mean, it was just chosen a long time ago, and we're going to keep doing it. If you go to another school, they use some other mascot. And there's like some tiger for Centralia High School. Like, why do they choose that? I don't know. There's no tigers here. But they just chose. It's not going to change. All right, so what quadrant is alpha over 2 in? You could look and, and say, what, what quadrant is alpha over in? What quadrant is alpha in? between pi and 3 pi over 2. So what quadrant is alpha in? Almost. 3. So it's, between, it's past pi, but not quite to the 3 pi over 2. However, the alpha quadrant doesn't matter. What I need to know, what quadrant is alpha over 2 in? So that's the important thing to know here. So how do I take my inequality and solve for alpha over 2? How do I solve this for alpha over 2? It's an easy algebra move. There you go. Divide everything by 2. Does that change our inequality signs around? No, because 2 is positive. So it's not going to change inequality. So we got pi over 2 less than alpha over 2 less than 3 pi over 4. <coughs> All right, so alpha is bigger than pi over 2 and it's smaller than 3 pi over 4. And we know 3 pi over 4 is less than 4 pi over 4 which is regular pi. So alpha is between pi over 2 and pi. So pi over 2, and we're actually less than 3 pi over 4, so it's going to be in quadrant 2, but it'll be in the first half of quadrant 2. So there's alpha over 2 right there. So I don't know the values yet, but I can say plus or minus. So it's x positive or negative. In quadrant 2, is x positive or negative? negative? Negative, very good. And y, positive or negative? Positive. So that determines, that's right there. Cos alpha over 2 is negative. Sine alpha over 2, positive. So sine is going to be the positive square root of cos, and I can just use the, I already had alpha, so I'm just using these two, uh, sine alpha over 2 is 1 minus cos alpha over 2 square root, and cosine is the same thing with a plus. So that's 1 minus cos alpha over 2, and this one is negative, 1 plus cos alpha over 2, and what is 
I don't actually know alpha. But I do know what is cosine of alpha. So I'm just going to use cos alpha right there. So I know the value for cosine alpha. So cosine alpha is negative 3 fifths. So I'm just going to take that negative 3 fifths and put that value in for cosine alpha. So that is itself cosine alpha. So this is 1 minus negative 3 fifths divided by 2. And this is negative 1 plus negative 3 fifths over 2. And then just simplifying this, minus minus is plus. So this is 1 plus 3 fifths over 2. And this one is negative square root 1 minus 3 fifths over 2. Don't spend time simplifying these unless you have extra time to spend. But just leave these unsimplified. That'll be the best. All right, any questions on getting to these two? So let's find your press exam. Exam. All right, so this is a document that's online. What I want to look at is the identities. I want to make sure. All right, part F, I want to talk about the only thing that I haven't really shown you here is how do you do sine of 3 theta? So you haven't really seen, you've seen sine 2 theta. Uh, you haven't seen secant of 2 theta. How do you think uh, you deal with secant 2 theta in part E here, this identity? Would it be 1 over 2 theta? It'll be 1 over cos 2 theta. And then you can use those identities there. It's basically the reciprocal of cos 2 theta. And same thing on the right. You can turn your secant squares into uh, 1 over cos squared if you want to. All right, but part F, let's look at how do we deal with cos 3 theta. So one way to write that, cos 3 theta, you could write as cos 2 theta plus theta. And cos 2 theta plus theta, the sum formula, that's cos 2 theta times cos theta minus sine 2 theta sine theta. So I took 3 theta and broke it down into 2 theta plus theta. Now, we have a couple ways I could use cos 2 theta. I could expand that out using the double angle formula, or I could write that as cos theta plus theta and use the sum formula. So it depends on what my destination is as to what is the best one to go with. So just looking cos 2 theta, I could write that as uh, cos theta plus theta. And I think if you go this route, you get the exact same thing. So this is cos theta, cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta, which is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. And that's one of the three options for cos 2 theta. There's two other ones that you can go with also. Just depends on what your destination is. Uh, I, this would be cruel to do uh, something like cos 7 theta, but if you did cos 7 theta, you could play the same game. You just have to do it lots of times in a row, and it's going to get uglier each time. So your web work may have something like this. You can just go with uh, cos 6 theta, plus theta, et cetera, et cetera. So you can sort of pick out a theta each time. Uh, but I wouldn't. that's going to take quite a few steps to write it out. 